When a Japanese man set his eyes on her, they could never resist her seductive charm. Her name was Miyuki Ueda, commonly regarded as the most notorious femme fatale in Japanese history. So what exactly was it about her that made so many of the men in Japan completely enchanted by her? And why was she put on the death sentence, only the second woman in post-war Japan to receive such a sentence and had to face the end of her life while being incarcerated at a prison in Hiroshima? In today's video, we will be finding out the answer to all of these questions. So without further ado, let's dive into the life story of Miyuki Ueda and the cautionary tale in which her story provides. Miyuki Ueda was born in 1973 at a small Japanese city of Tottori. The city is famous for its sand dunes, which is the largest of its kind in Japan and attracts many tourists around the year. From a young age, Miyuki was known for having a rather eccentric personality, characterized by her ability to lie with a straight face and without any sense of guilt. When it came to the matter of physical appearance, Miyuki was told to always be on the very obese side of the spectrum, hovering around the weight of 100 kilograms or 220 pounds with a short height of 5 feet 2 inches, which led her to have difficulty in making friends. So in her attempts to attract attention and make friends, she lied about how she was popular among other boys at school, such as how this and that boy confessed their love to her and how she was so tired of being so popular among the boys. But quite naturally, most students never believed her stories, mainly due to how they considered it quite impossible for a person of her quote-unquote appearance to be as popular as she claimed among the boys, which led her to be marked as a chronic liar among her peers and led her to be further ostracized at school. And partly because of such difficult times at school, she did not complete her secondary education and subsequently dropped out of high school. And after dropping out of high school, she worked in odd jobs here and there, such as working at a factory. And throughout this time span, she married and got divorced twice, while giving birth to five children. And with the increasing financial burden of having to raise five children, she decided to work at a local snack bar in her hometown of Tottori. A snack bar in Japan are small establishments that hire female hostesses to entertain middle-aged Japanese men with light snacks, drinks, in an intimate karaoke-like atmosphere. And she did not work at any snack bar. She worked at Japan's Debu Snack Bar, which are snack bars that only specifically hires female hostesses whose weight were on the very heavy side of the spectrum. And at the snack bar, Miyuki then began to, slowly but surely, seduce the middle-aged Japanese male clients who frequented the bar. While it is generally frowned upon for female hostesses in Japan to meet the male clients outside of the bar, Miyuki is told to have actively met her male clients on dates during the non-working hours, and thus got closer to them in a rapid fashion. And when the relationship was considered intimate enough, she gradually began to gaslight her male partners, lying to them about how her parents were suffering from cancer, and how she was having a hard time financially in paying all of the hospital bills, so on and so forth. But then, before all of this, we have to ask the natural question. How did she manage to seduce and win the hearts of so many Japanese men to the point of absolute love blindedness where they were willing to sacrifice everything for her while simultaneously possessing an external appearance of, let's just say, not befitting of whom we would expect as the nation's most notorious femme fatale? This was indeed the question asked by the Japanese public when her story became widely known throughout the nation, and there has been a few conjectures. First, it was later told that she took a very active stance when it came to showing her romantic interest to the men, such as first asking the male client of the snack bar to meet her outside of the bar and head to a love hotel together. And with many men in Japan confessing how they are tired of always having to be the one to show interest, arrange the dates, and just overall be responsible for progressing with the romantic relationship with the person of the opposite gender, Miyuki's enthusiastic approach seems to have been a breath of fresh air and a source of appeal to many of her previous partners. And it seems that she was very diligent when it came to successfully maintaining the relationship with multiple number of her boyfriends at the same time, such as giving each of her boyfriends a daily phone call or provide them with a handwritten love letter. 
And these handwritten love letters seems to have worked tremendously well when it came to completely taking over the hearts of her boyfriends. To elaborate, many of her to-be boyfriends may have had some natural skepticism about her intentions before dating her as she worked at a hostess bar where the female hostesses met multiple male clients a day. But these genuine handwritten love letters played a successful role in eradicating all of such doubt about the authenticity of Miyuki's intentions in the minds of her boyfriends as many of them believed that a woman who was just dating him for his money would never take the time and energy to write them with such sincere love letters on such frequent basis. And there could, of course, be other sources of her irresistible appeal in which she possessed that has not been revealed to the outside world and thus we will never be able to know of. But then, why was it the case that Miyuki faced her death recently in January 14th 2023 at a Japanese prison located in Hiroshima. This is as she was convicted of two murders and has been largely regarded as responsible for four others. Five of the six victims who had to meet such tragic fates were all her ex-boyfriends. Let's briefly go over the cases one by one. A 42-year-old journalist for a reputable newspaper in Japan passed away on May 13, 2004, after being ran over by a train in the city of Tottori. He was one of Miyuki's boyfriends at the time. And on the note in which he wrote before he passed, he wrote messages such as how he was so happy to have experienced true love by meeting Miyuki. It was reported that Miyuki constantly asked the journalist's boyfriend for financial aid in sums that he did not have. So it was later found that at the time of his passing, the boyfriend owed large sums of money from his co-workers, all borrowed in the first place to financially aid Miyuki. On August 18, 2007, another one of Miyuki's boyfriends passed away as he was found in the sea near the sand dunes of Tottori. In February 2008, a Japanese police officer and yet another one of Miyuki's boyfriends passed away in the mountains on the outskirts of Tottori. After investigation, it was yet again found that the boyfriend had ongoing financial trouble with Miyuki. On April 11, 2009, a 47-year-old Japanese truck driver boyfriend of Miyuki passed away in the Japanese sea in, yet again, Tottori Prefecture. On October 7, 2009, a 57-year-old electronic store owner was found passed away in a river in Totori Prefecture. And although he was not a boyfriend of Miyuki, the incident goes as follows. On one day, Miyuki and one of the boyfriends visited an electronic store owned by the aforementioned victim. The electronic store owner and Miyuki's boyfriend were close acquaintances. And based on this close relationship between Miyuki's boyfriend and the store owner, Miyuki bought 1.4 million Japanese yen worth of TV and other electronic goods from the store, promising to pay back later. However, after months of not repaying, the electronic store owner finally called and urged Miyuki to pay back the old money. And in early October 2009, Miyuki called the electronic store owner to come visit her house to collect the old money. So on October 6, 2009, the store owner headed to Miyuki's house most likely in the hopes of collecting the old debt. It was found during later investigation that the store owner visited Miyuki's house multiple times on the day. And on the very next day, he was found in a river, four kilometers away from his home in Tottori. On October 27, 2009, another boyfriend and frequenter of Miyuki's snack bar suddenly passed away from a supposed illness. It was later found that Miyuki owed 80,000 Japanese yen to this boyfriend, who was 58 years old at the time of his passing. On January 28, 2010, Miyuki was arrested by the Totori Prefectural Police for the suspicion of responsibility for the aforementioned cases. She received a sentence of capital punishment on December 4, 2012, only the second female criminal to receive such a sentence in post-war Japanese history. Now, Miyuki did deny any of her involvement in the mysterious passing of all of her ex-boyfriends. However, the Japanese Supreme Court did not accept Miyuki's appeal and her sentence was upheld. And while she was waiting for her capital punishment to be carried out, she passed away on January 14, 2023 after choking on food while eating her meal in prison. She was told to have ate rice, yakisoba, fried eggs, ham potato salad, spaghetti salad, and fish on the day of her passing. 
Now, what kind of exact seductive charm in which she possessed that allowed her to meet man after man, have them willingly hand over her astronomical sums of money, only for all of them to be met with such sad fates afterwards, we can never know for perfectly certain, despite the aforementioned conjectures in the video. But what this story does tell us is that one always has to have utmost caution when entering romantic relationships and giving one's heart and trust to others, regardless of how genuine the other person may seem during the initial phases. And while wanting to avoid any type of negative prejudice to individuals of any occupation, the real life honest fact of the matter is that such advice especially applies to if one is even considering of entering into a relationship with an individual who work in the night industry with an occupation such as a hostess. And with plethora of other similar cases to the one of Miyuki Ueda in Japan, I sincerely hope that the day comes when the recurrence of such incidents in the nation is brought to an absolute halt, as well as in other nations, if analogous cases are to exist there as well. Thank you for watching today's episode of Asian Analysis. If you enjoy learning about unique stories from Japan such as the one from today's video and wish to watch more of them, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel as well as check out our book which goes in-depth into the Japanese psychology and analyze the roots of the often idiosyncratic set of actions conducted by so many of the individuals from the nation all stemming from the unique psychology. And as always, thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next episode of Asian Analysis.